Okay, so now we've confirmed that the speed sensor is definitely uh, dead. What I'm going to do now is go through every single wire and check every single wire, make sure every other wire is working. So the stop light, you know, make sure when the uh, brake pedal is released, we have no voltage, when it's depressed, we have battery voltage, etc. So I'm going to work my way through the list. So I've got this list here, and then I've got this schematic as well, which has some uh, wire colours on it. So I'm going to go through the schematic, and when I've confirmed that they're in the right pin location and the right colour, I'm ticking them off. So I'm just going to work my way through this list first, make sure every wire it says here is here, and that I don't have some wacky plan, otherwise there's no point going off this if you know it's not right, because there are a few different um, differences throughout the years. So this is the 1990 version, my car's a 91. I've also printed off the 1992 version. Couldn't get a 91 version, funnily enough. And this is the 92 version, um, which you can see the the reset switch is only a two-wire configuration, and the speed sensor is a green-red on mine, and on the 92 it's a brown, brown-red. So if you look at, if you just quickly look at that one, you can see it's a two-wire. And if you look at the one that I actually have, which I confirmed, it's actually four wire, one for each uh, mode. So there's obviously a few differences throughout the years. You've got to make sure you get the right one. So that's what I'm going to do now. Alrighty, so I've worked my way through the list. So we'll start off at the bottom here. So obviously the overdrive doesn't, um, is not on this engine. Stoplight switch, which is the green-white wire that works. Um, I was testing continuity at first, which um, it has continuity at all ways, but it has battery voltage when you have had the key on. Stop fuse, got power there. Power source, got power with key on, no power with key off. Actuator resistance, uh, that seems to be almost double, but it's you know it's not pretty pretty close considering um, it's probably just how my probes are on the pins. Actuator position, that's got good resistance. Um, can't really change, can't really check that one at the moment. Speed sensor, check that yesterday. That was all good. This one, I know that works because I actually um, used it to try to get fault codes out of it. This one, I got continuity on all those pins, so I guess it works. Um, control switch, I've always got continuity no matter the position. Ground connection, that works. Control switch. Uh, that works as well. And then parking switch. Um, it has continuity at all points, but it's got 12 volts released and 0 volts pulled. So I'm not sure if this, this book might be wrong because it doesn't appear to be working because obviously the light comes up on the dash as well. Neutral start switch. Now this one have continuity at all times. So if I have continuity on this pin it won't go into cruise control because it thinks it's in park. Now this car used to be auto and I didn't do the auto to manual swap, someone else did. And it appears that um, instead of chopping that wire so the car starts, they've provided power elsewhere and this wire still has continuity. So I'm just going to de-pin it. So you can just, it just clips, the connector unclips, flicks open and then you can pull the pin out so it's the black white wire. I'm going to take that wire out for now, um, if that works and it's all working once I've got the speed sensor in, what I'm going to do is run that to a clutch switch. So when I put my foot on the clutch, it'll ground that connection out and flick off the cruise control. So fingers crossed, I now have to get the speed sensor, disconnect that wire, and it should all work. If it doesn't, then I've got a problem with the actuator because all the wiring seems good. I've just de-pinned the uh, neutral safety. I just used a bit of welding wire, and you just... Um, slide it up the top of the pin there, there's a little retaining clip, flick that up and then the pin just pulls out. So that way we're not cutting any wires, if it's the wrong wire, if I need to put it back or whatever I can. And later on I can just sort of pull this back, cut it and then take it out of the car, solder it up and then put it back in again. So Now I'll go for a test drive and uh, see if obviously the speed sensor is stuffed but maybe it isn't, I don't know, maybe this will work. See how we go. Alright boys and girls we are in business so I've put it in diagnostic mode which you get into by pulling down the lever and then turning the car on and then putting the cruise control button in now I got to get a bit confused because when I was reading the procedure it almost seemed like the light was always supposed to be on in all the menus and then when you press all the cancel switches they turn off and it wasn't doing that for me so I found that a bit odd 
So now that I've removed the neutral start switch, you can see the light's always on. And when we go down, it should flash twice. One, two, which it does. It goes back on. If we flick it up, it should flash three times. One, two, three, which it does. Now if we put our, pull our handbrake up, it should turn off. And it does. Beautiful. Now if we put our foot on the brake, it should turn off as well. And it does. And that's it. We're all working. So it was definitely that neutral start switch. So now I'm interested to see if maybe... Uh, I don't know how to test the speed sensor properly, and maybe it is fine. So... Let's go for a drive. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I just went for a drive, and when you're in diagnostic mode, um, the cruise light will stay illuminated, and then when you go over 50 kilometers an hour, it will start to flash. Now, it didn't flash, so that means my speed sensor is still definitely knackered, but everything else seems good. So, didn't throw up any other codes. So, there's actually a speed sensor wire that comes out of the four-wheel drive computer over here, which I used for my ECU. I don't know what sensor type it is, but it's this uh, cruise control requires a four pulse um, square wave, so four pulse per revolution. I don't know what that is, so what I'm going to do is chuck the meter on it now and very, very slowly drive forward, and obviously this is a 4.11, um, roughly 4.11 diff ratio, so I should get four pulses per quarter revolution. So I'm going to go very, very slowly, see if I get four pulses. If I do, I'm going to run a wire from there over here and just jam it into the speed sensor part on the thing and go see if it works, because then I won't need to get a speed sensor. I've got my meter on the green wire that's down there. I've got a, uh, the earth cable down on the seat hole down here. And we can see we've got 11 volts if we go forward. Go 0, 11, 0, 11, 0, 11, 0, 11. Now, a bit hard to tell what the uh, actual rating is of this, but if we just oops, go back into reverse, 11, seems more like a two pulse. get about a pulse per half revolution or something like that but I'm just going to wire this up anyway because it does seem like a uh, a DC square wave pulse and it might work you never know okay well it worked so the wire that you need to get this to work is in the passenger side kick panel on a 80 series in Australia and it only comes on the full-time four-wheel drives I believe but the harness itself I think is in, in all 80s so the wire you actually need is a red wire with black trace. You can uh, you can see it there where I've spliced into it. So black wire with red trace, and then it comes up and goes on the second plug or the sort of pin twenty or somewhere around there on the locker computer. It's the only uh, it's the only wire of that size in that area. So it's just that one there. So you can see there's another black wire with red trace. That's got a silver bit on it. It's the smaller wire, black wire with red trace. Just pinch out of that one. In my case I've put a green wire on it because the ECU is green. For speedo on uh, the FTE, I did have this hooked up to my computer originally, but um, I disconnected it because it was doing some funny things. But anyway, I'm going to extend this wire, run it nicely up over chop it at the ECU there and splice it in. Alright, so we're cruising now in uh, with the cruise control on, so I've got it locked at about 100 um, with the 35s, it's a little bit out so it reads about 94 at the moment so it's all sitting pretty happy uh, at 100 k's an hour it seems really nice, it uh, doesn't fluctuate too much I haven't really tried it with gradients and stuff like that but just sitting at 100 it seems pretty stable you can click up speed somewhat, so I'll just try to click up speed now. So it clicks up in about 1k increments. Um, because my FTE is tuned, it, it, it's quite harsh. The uh, pedal is very sensitive. So clicking up, it does sort of ramp up really quickly, as you can see. 
and then come back down and settle. Because of this, if you use the cruise control at around 60 k's an hour, um, it's a little bit too touchy. It sort of ramps the throttle up a bit too much and then backs it off and then ramps it up and it gets a bit confused. I think if it was a factory FTE, they're a bit of a lazy pedal, um, so it should be all right. But because when I got my car tuned, they sort of tuned all that delay out, it's uh, it's very touchy and it's, it's a bit hard for this cruise control to, uh, to play around with it. So I'm pretty happy. All I really wanted it for was when I was sitting at 100, 110 to lock it off, basically. And I've achieved that, so it's very good. I think it's a winner. So that's the cruise control, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.